Hello again, Flight Sim friends. Here's a quick follow-up to the uh, the first attempt at the Knobster, the DIY Knobster project. Uh, the last time around, uh, I was doing some experimentation with the knob um, to understand how rotary encoders work uh, and how to how the programming works in the Arduino. Uh, the next step was to actually get it hooked up as a Knobster flashed with the Air Manager Knobster uh, software or, or a sketch that they that Air Manager provides right in the Air Manager app. Um, and then the, the uh, second half of that was to figure out the wiring um, because the documentation on their wiki doesn't explain much and I couldn't find much. So it turns out the wiring is actually very straightforward. Um, the pinouts are on the Sim Innovations wiki um, and so you just wire the pins of the knob board as labeled assuming that you put the knob in this position I think if you put the knob on this back side instead then the A and B uh, pins would be reversed I think um, I haven't actually tried it but um, I think they would be reversed but then it would just be a matter of switch, swapping the you know swapping the wiring here um, so it wouldn't be a big deal to fix um, so you just wire the pins as they are documented right to the the Arduino in this case the Arduino Nano um, right to those uh, that set of deep the, the the digital input pins which is uh, what there's a ground and there's D2 through D6 for the five contacts uh, and then on the on the knob you can just short I just shorted you can see on the left here the three the two commons for the rotary and then and one half of the switch. To, those can be all wired together because so they just go to the common ground. The sketch, it seems, puts all the digital inputs to a um, to a pull-up resistor, so that uh, the contact, when the contact is made from the rotary, from the rotary encoders or from the button, um, it uh, drops the pin down to ground. Uh, and then the sketch just deals with uh, translating all that input into the uh, into the software, into Air Manager. So the next part of this little project for the DIY Knobster is, of course, mounting it. So I have found some scrap plastic that I just drew, uh, drill, uh, drilled a hole into for the the center, um, for the kind of threaded threaded section of the knob uh, for mounting. It's a little bit thicker than it needs to be, so I couldn't use the, the washer that came with the knob, but that's all right. Um, and then underneath, underneath the main hole, there's a, a little tiny extra hole to mate up with the uh, there's a little tiny pin at the bottom of the knob body to uh, to uh, a little I think it's a pawl it's called um, that would uh, act as a as a anti twist uh, stop. So then inside of the panel inside of the flight sim panel uh, you just drilled out a about a one inch diameter hole uh, you can see in the MDF there. And then the piece of plastic mounted on the outside, on the front, uh, to actually mount the knob. So let's get it mounted up. So as you can imagine, the mounting is fairly straightforward. We just take, we just take our knob, and we're going to put it through the back side. Make sure I got the pin alignment right. And then there's the little pin, which requires a little bit of shimmying to get it in, in place, but I think I got it. And then the, uh, again, I said no, there's no, wa I can't use the washer for this because the uh, the plastic's a little bit too thick for the, uh, for the threaded section. It actually will fit with the washer on it, but then the outer knob doesn't, uh, doesn't seat all the way down, which then causes the inner knob the inner encoder knob to uh, to not be able to to not be pressable. You can't uh, you can't press it down far enough to actually engage the button. Although I don't have the button mapped to anything, so I'm not sure if that's really a problem. But it doesn't seem to be a problem without the washer. So get that fairly snug, and then we got our outer outer encoder knob and our inner encoder knob. Oh, I got it. Got it on there so the button works. Um, again, there's nothing. I don't think the map, the button mapped to anything right now, but at least the 
rotaries are on there and it works nice and solid in the panel and then I've got air manager running so the last thing is to hook up our USB this uses the old USB uh, I think it's B grab the cord there and we'll plug it in and there's our USB connected sound and now with any luck we should now have some functional some knob functionality so I've got my touch screen on the left uh, one of the two one of the two touch screen panels on the left and one on the right zoom in a little bit forget the right get a radio and a a nav and OBS so we'll power on we're in the 152 this is the 152 panels that I laid out turn on some power and with any luck we should get functionality on the OBS and then we can adjust our altimeter that works great and then we got some radios and the inner and outer buttons you can see the air manager highlight on the button. Uh, outer button adjusts the megahertz and the inner button, or the inner rotor rather. Uh, the outer rotor and the inner rotor adjust the uh, kilohertz setting. So, works great. The one thing I have noticed is the, uh, the bug, the known issue with the, um, the, the held down key press. Um, if you're using a controller like the, like the, um, the honeycomb yoke, um, because the buttons uh, show up in flight sim as a as a held down button it it, it works it the flight sim thinks you're holding down a button constantly so it there's a bug in the software that results in this problem where you try to adjust say the OBS for VOR uh, reading and it step it goes in 10 10 degree increments occasionally it doesn't um, but it's not predictable and definitely isn't consistent um, generally it goes in 10 degree steps, which is a bit annoying. Um, same thing happens with the, uh, with the heading indicator. If you try to, if you, uh, adjust your heading bug, then you get, um, you get 10 degree steps as well, which is pretty annoying when you're trying to do autopilot, um, and you need to make a tweak to your heading. But, um, I have an idea to fix that, uh, and I'll hopefully we'll cover that in another video if I can get it to do, to, uh, fix. But uh, we can see here the air manager, the air manager running with both touchscreens, and the knobs are working for both of those panels. Thanks for watching.